um, I still have one more interaction to cover, which is the strong interaction in the standard model. And I think that's about the right amount of time because it's a super complicated interaction. Um, so I really don't want to give a lot of detailed description of it. I'll just to give you an idea of the complication. So it's a sort of the idea of, I refer to this as the hadronization here, the quarks forming bound states, right? And what I'm not really drawing here are um, the interaction between quarks. And the strong interaction, we say now it's mediated by a force boson called gluon, indicated with the letter G. And what can I tell you? Um, so it's a gluon. As you might guess, its name comes from glue because it glues quarks together. Um, there's, I guess I should tell you there's eight different types. There's eight types of gluons. <laughs> I'm not going to draw all eight. And um, some of you might have heard the phrase QCD or quantum chromo, chromo dynamics. Chromo as in color. This is where physics, uh, particle physicists get very fanciful. What they call color has nothing to do with literal color. Because um, like, what are you talking about? It's a you know, shorter wavelength than visible, so there's no color involved here. Um, what they are using is they are using the idea of color theory to express the symmetry that's involved in the strong interaction. Um, I don't know how many of you color theory. What, you get, what do you get when you combine red, green, and blue? What do you get when you combine these three? Uh, not everything isn't quite right. Well, it, you're adding it additively. Not watercolors, but light. Yeah, you get white. So combining all these, oops, wrong color. You get white, meaning you get colorless uh, state. So the charges that are involved in strong interaction, they come in three different types. So, so far with the electromagnetic interaction, there was really only one type, electric charge. It could be plus or minus, but that's like particle, antiparticle. With the, the strong interaction, there are three different kinds of charges. So there's red, there's anti-red, there's green, there's anti-green, there's blue, there's anti-blue. So um, like in a pion, pion doesn't have any uh, color associated with it. So, so this is what's meant by color confinement, that the particles we can observe has no color. So the way mesons are colorless is they always come in quark and anti-quark. So the quark carries, let's say, red color. I'm simplifying this, by the way. Then the anti-quark would carry the anti-red color, or blue, anti-blue, green, anti-green. Or actually, yeah. So that's how mesons are colorless. Carrying this analogy further, when you look at, for example, oh, I don't, I don't, I think I'm going to run out of time, uh, which is well, um, I think. So if you have a for example, um, neutron, up, down, down quark, then what we would say is, well, they have actually, each of these quarks carry different colors. So you have red quark, green quark, and blue quark. Once again, the names are simply a reminder for the symmetry that's involved underneath. So the symmetry of the quantities that are involved uh, results in this combination, producing um, sort of a scalar state or state that has no color. Um, so this produces the color, uh, colorless state. And what I would tell you is that um, there is not much point in actually drawing a strong interaction, uh, strong interaction Feynman diagrams. Because Feynman diagrams, the theories that they are supposed to represent are what's con called perturbation theory. As in, there's some underlying energy levels, and you're looking at what are the changes to the energy level. And um, the QCD, or quantum chronodynamics, it's, um, 
you can do it perturbative, perturbatively, look at small modifications to the interaction only at very high energy. So when you look at like a binding force of these three quarks, it's impossible. Um, it, it's, uh, there's no good theory to, like for example, predict mass of the neutron from the known masses of up and down quarks. It just doesn't work. So kind of um, interaction that you would represent are just a jumble of mass of quark gluon exchange from one to the other. Like there's no rhyme or pattern or anything. It's not. No. If we drew something, it's going to be all very complicated. Um, one thing I will tell you is uh, in each of these vertexes, the gluons, they are bicolored. They carry two colors. So if I have blue quark coming in, it would emit, for example, blue. And I don't know. Let me just get an example of anti-red um, gluon. Then the, this quark going out here would now be red. Having get, gotten rid of red, it now has red color. So how many different kinds of combinations of gluons should there be? Just combinatorics, counting number of possibilities. Uh, you know, I think it can be red, red. So if it, if it was, for example, blue, and anti-blue, oops, wrong color. Uh, just gonna use black. If it was blue and anti-blue, then this would simply remain being blue. Yeah, so you can repeat. So everyone here knows how to do combinatorics? First, you count the number of spots, two spots. Um, and you should know what the number of independent possibilities. How many independent possibilities? Three. How many independent possibilities? Three. So how many different ways of combining these two independent possibilities? Three times three. You multiply them together, right? It's like with the independent probability. Um, so there's technically nine possible choices. It turns out one of the combinations like this is color neutral. This is kind of what I was referring to when I was saying this is kind of simplified. There's one combination of anti, uh, red, anti-red, blue, anti-blue, um, the green, anti-green, one kind of anti-symmetric combination. That's the colorless state. So colorless gluon cannot mediate strong interaction. So you end up with a nine minus one, eight gluons. So <laughs> I don't know how much of this I can test. <laughs> so what I, at a maximum, what I would expect you to know is that the particle mediating strong interaction in the standard model is called a gluon. Let's leave it there. 